When it comes to bass fishing, actually any type of fishing, your fishing knot is the most important part of your entire system. Sometimes you can get the wrong rod and still catch fish. Sometimes you can have the wrong reel, the wrong line, the wrong lure and still catch fish. But if you mess up your knot, if you tie your knot wrong, you're not gonna catch any fish because your line is going to break and you're gonna lose that fish, you're gonna lose that lure and it's not gonna be a good day. No! So whether you're just getting started in bass fishing and you want to know what the best bass fishing knots are, or maybe you're a seasoned vet and you want to just make sure that you're tying the knots that you know how to tie correctly, this video is going to show you exactly that. Today, I'm going to show you the five best knots that you can tie in bass fishing. Now, I am going to show you how to tie one of my favorite fluorocarbon knots, but what I did is I went out and I got four of the most successful bass fishermen, both on YouTube and in on some of the biggest bass fishing tours out there like the Bassmaster Elite Series. And I'm gonna have these guys show you how to tie the best knots in bass fishing. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. So before we get into the video, I just wanna give a big shout out to sportsmansoutfitters.com. I'm gonna leave a link in the description. Without their partnership, I really wouldn't be able to bring you videos like the one that I'm bringing you today. Sportsman's Outfitters not only offers a bunch of fishing gear, but basically all of your outdoor needs and one of the best things that I love about sportsmansoutfitters.com is you can get some of your favorite lures for the best prices. You know today we're talking about fishing knots and with that being said you really want to have some of the best fishing line that you can get your hands on and you can get that all at sportsmansoutfitters.com. Please help support the people that are supporting this channel. The first knot that I want to show you guys is my favorite fluorocarbon fishing knot and that's the double pitson. The reason that I really, really love this knot is because it's actually more of a cinch. It's not necessarily a knot. So there's really no part of the knot that's going to cut into itself. The harder you pull, the tighter that cinch gets. In order to show you how to tie this knot, I'm gonna show you how to tie it on a chatterbait. I have my fluorocarbon line right here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is double my line over and go through the eye of the hook. So I can either actually double it over and make a loop like this to pass through the eye, or I can go in and then back through the eye of my lure. As you guys can see, we have my tag in and my main line over on this side and I have a loop on this side. I'm gonna hold the main line and my tag in and my finger like this and I'm gonna lay this other loop on top of that finger just like that. So now I'm going to take this loop over here and I wanna go around this other loop that I made. So I'm gonna go around three times. One, two, three. So I have spun it around three times. Now I'm gonna take my loop and go through the loop that I made at the top, like so. I'm gonna wet the knot by using my mouth and then I'm gonna pull this together like so. Here is my main line over here and here's my knot. What you're left with is a loop and a tag in that you need to cut off. So you're gonna be basically left with three different tag ins on this particular knot. So I just pull the loop and the tag in to the side, trim it off right there, and there you guys go, the double pinson. The second knot that is very important for any bass fisherman to know is the snell knot. Before I knew how to tie the snell knot, I was losing and missing so many fish in heavy cover. I switched over to the snell knot and it made a huge difference. You can take it from me or you can take it from a guy who's literally probably caught hundreds, maybe thousands of fish punching heavy cover over his lifetime. So I'm gonna kick it over to a real special guest and that's Mike from Mikey Balls Fish. Fishing. What is going on? Tyler asked me to talk to you guys about a topic that I'm pretty familiar with because I love to flip. Get in here. Get in here. It's a freaking seven pounder, dude. <laughs> Do you see that thing? The snell knot, which I have tied on right there. So the snell knot is mainly used on straight shank hooks like this. Very rarely will I ever tie a snell knot onto an offset shank hook. And for the most part, at least in my experience, it's mainly used when you're, you're using a technique like flipping or punching mats or really, really thick vegetation. Basically, what a snell knot does is when you actually put tension on the line, it kicks out the hook. Pretty cool, huh? kind of like a little mechanical action. When you're using, you know, that big long flipping stick with 
no stretch line or low stretch line like braid or some very strong like high pound fluorocarbon when you go to set that hook that hook just kicks right into the mouth top of the fish pops them very perfectly and and it's nice for flipping because oftentimes those reaction strikes that you get when you're going down through the mats you don't really have a lot of time to set up and react it's really kind of a reaction on your end to the reaction bite of the fish where you're just lifting very quickly using that longer rod that low stretch line to hook that fish up a snell setup for punching or flipping usually i like to do two bobber stoppers Oh, over one ounce weight. I can go lighter, but for the majority of the stuff that, that you're gonna be using a Snell or that I would use a Snell knot for, it's pretty thick, so you're gonna need to punch on through. This is actually a 1.5 ounce um, hog tech tungsten weight. And then, like I said, a straight shank hook is what you're gonna see on most of these rigs. This is a four aught Strike King hack attack hook. Any straight shank hook will work. Let me show you real quick how to rig it up. So I have a Gambler Stinger right here. All you're going to do is take that straight shank hook and pass it through the bait and bring it out just like you would an offset shank hook. Maybe go like a quarter inch down, pop it out right there, and then bring it through. And then your small keeper right on there is going to pass through and almost bumper up against the plastic, thus stopping the hook from sliding through. And then you're just going to Texas rig it traditionally, just like you would if you were using an offset shank hook. So let's go ahead and uh, get into tying it. I have a four rod straight shank and I have some braid. You can tie this knot with full carbon, but the majority applications that you're gonna be doing this with are usually going to be braid oriented. The first step that you're gonna do is you're gonna take your braided line and pass it through the eye of the hook and you're going to go with the eye of the hook pointed down and your line should be going up. So perpendicular to the eye of the hook, you're going to take out about five inches or so going parallel with the hook shank and you're going to make a small loop and store that loop right above the shank of the hook, just like that. So you'll have tag line right here. You'll have a loop right there on top of the hook running parallel. And what you're going to do is with the tag line that you brought around from the tip of that loop is you're going to wrap it around the shank of the hook right here just above the keeper. Six to eight times is usually good. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. It created a small wrapping around the shank of the hook right there. And then what I'm going to do is with the remaining of that tag line right there, I'm going to take my loop that we made and I'm going to pass the tag line through the loop and hold that tag line and draw in my main line while being careful that that loop comes down right on to the shank of the hook. Draw both, both sides tight so you'll basically have your main line which is right here. You have a small tag line hanging off and we created a sort of wrapping around the shank of the hook right there. The tag line can be cut off just like that. And thus we have our snow. Now the next knot that we're gonna talk about is probably one of the most popular knots in fishing period. It's one that you should know. It's the one that I use a lot of times when I'm fishing braided line and I'm not flipping. So if I'm fishing a frog or maybe I'm fishing a big top water bait, I'm going to be tying the Palomar knot. This is also a knot that you can tie with monofilament and fluorocarbon, but let's kick it over to Tyler Anderson from Tyler's Real Fishing to show you exactly how to tie this knot. There's another one with him. Eat it. Eat it. Got him. Got two. I got two. What do I do? What do I do? I got one that I'm gonna boat flip this one. Even bigger. Yes, baby! Woo! That was one of the most hectic things. I've had happen to me in a long time. How's it going, Bass Fishing HQ family? My name is Tyler Anderson from the YouTube channel, Tyler's Real Fishing, and Mr. Tyler Berger has instructed me to talk about the Palomar Knot. So let's start by showing you guys up close and personal how to tie the Palomar Knot. My main line is coming from this direction right here, tag end going this way. I've got my braided line right here. You can tie a Palomar with braided line, monofilament, fluorocarbon, whatever you're feeling, but it's very, very important in my experience to wet your line. I have found wetting a line besides braid, especially fluorocarbon and monofilament, really helps to eliminate memory when you tie that knot. Take the tag end here, double it over, pinch my line, form that, that loop from the beginning as long as my eye is big enough. And just like that, we have ourselves the beginning of the knot. Your 
uh, loop end here is going to have to be long enough to get completely around your lure to tie this knot. So if you're tying a small little tiny hair jig, your loop doesn't have to be very big. But if you're tying this over an Alabama rig with tons of wires and hooks, you're going to have to have a huge, huge loop. For this frog, I'd say a loop about that size, you know, four or five inches is fine for this application. Then you're going to tie an overhand knot with that loop. So just like this, tie an overhand knot. And now you can see the loop is overhand knotted, if that's a term, without tying this loop down, so without cinching it down, kind of leaving it still open, put my finger in there just like that, and I'm going to take that loop all the way around my lure, and the Palomar is almost done, but what I always do, especially fluorocarbon, is I'm going to wet this entire process with my mouth as I cinch that knot down, but as you cinch that knot down, you want to take it real slow. Being slow is very, very important with the Palomar. When I try to pull both the tag end and the main line at the same time, and then as I get near the end, I will wet it again, as you guys can see right there, and I'm going to just pull very, very slowly until you have right there a perfectly tied Palomar knot that looks just like that. And of course, with braided line, you're not going to have any memory issues. Let me show you what happens if you tie this a little bit too fast and incorrectly with fluorocarbon. All right, and so we have the loop all the way around the Palomar. What I'm going to do is not wet it at all, and I'm going to cinch it down. And near the end, I'm going to let go of the tag end and just pull the main line here. And you'll be able to tell is that the main line has memory right there where the end of the knot was cinched. Right where you finish that knot, there's now memory in that line. Now, one of my favorite reasons why I love the Palomar is because you can tie it so fast, I can tie it with my eyes closed. So right here we have our fishing line and our hook. My eyes are fully closed. So I got my fishing line. I'm gonna make sure to pinch it and cause a loop just like that. I've got the loop and I got my main line. I'm wrapping my loop around. The loop is now through. I'm going to find that loop, wrap it around the bottom of the hook, make sure I don't have any tags sticking out. Go like this. Cinch it down nice and tight, and right there is a completely successfully tied Palomar knot with no fray in the line, no memory in the line. Before you could say lickety split, I tied the Palomar knot with my eyes closed. My name's Tyler, and uh, this has been the Palomar segment. Now we've talked about a few knots that you actually connect directly to the lures, but something that's become extremely popular over the last five, 10 years is using braided line to a fluorocarbon leader. Now, when you do that, there's certain types of knots that you should tie. So this next knot is actually the knot that I use whenever I'm tying braided line to fluorocarbon. It's the one that I currently feel the most comfortable with, but why listen to me when you can listen to Bassmaster Elite Series Pro Hunter Shiro? Giant bro, oh my god. Hey guys, Bassmaster Elite Series Pro Hunter Shock here, and I want to talk to you about the crazy Alberto knot or the Alberto knot. Whatever you want to call it, it's combining braided line to monofilament or fluorocarbon line. It's my confidence knot. You know, a lot of guys, they do different knots, but a good knot is a well-tied knot, and that's what I've always said. If you can tie the knot properly, it's going to work without fail. With this knot, Crazy Alberto knot, I feel like I can tie it the easiest and quickest out of all the other knots. I've fished at Lake Erie for days using the same 10 pound braided line to an eight pound fluorocarbon leader and it didn't break. If I'm in a tournament, I wanna have something that I can retie quickly and not have to worry about it. And also, it's very tiny. I've never had any issues with it going through my guides, getting caught in my guides when I'm reeling in fish. I'm talking eight pound braided line to six pound fluorocarbon, all the way up to my flipping setup, which is 50 pound braid to 20 pound fluorocarbon. Let's dive in on how to tie this knot properly so you're set to go with your braided and fluorocarbon setup. In my right hand is my braided line. It's the white line. And then in my left hand, is the fluorocarbon line. The first thing that you're gonna do, you're gonna stretch out about six to eight inches of fluorocarbon line, and you're gonna create a loop. Now you're gonna take my braided line, and I'm going to go through that loop that we just created, and I'm gonna pull out about six to eight inches on that as well. And what we're gonna do is wrap down the fluorocarbon line 
with the braided line. So we're basically creating a coating around it, if you will. First thing I like to do is I always kind of get a little bit of moisture on it. I use my mouth. It helps the knot come together easier. So I just kind of get it wet. Now we're gonna start the wrapping process. We're gonna take it, we're gonna wrap it down the fluorocarbon. Seven times is what I like to do. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. You can see how neat that is. It's real neat, it's compact. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lubricate that again. I'm gonna wet it down with my mouth and we're going to work our way back up, essentially doing the same thing, but we're gonna be cross hatching on the way back up. We're gonna go seven times and watch this hand, each crossover that I make, this, this hand holds them. And that's really important because it helps keep everything nice and neat. We're gonna go back up on this very first one, cross hatch one. We're gonna cross hatch it two. And we're gonna move down a little bit more. Cross hatch three. So you can see what we're doing here. We've got that cross hatch going. And this hand's locking that in. Every time I cross it over, I'm locking it in so that line's not moving. Five, six, okay. And now we're going to go through. We created a hole when we came through this. And it's really hard to see, but you see that hole right there? So we're gonna come back over and this will be the seventh one. Poke it through there. You're gonna pull that through. You can see how that's all cross hatched up and I'm gonna wet it down one last time. You're gonna take both ends, get them wrapped up and don't do it quickly. I like to slowly pull this together. I kind of like to wet it as I cinch it down because I want all these essentially to come together equally. You don't want one end bunching up on the other end. Wet that down some more. Start to pull, you can see how uniformed it's coming together. Wet it down. Here's a tip for you. If things start to get bunched up, you can pull those around and you can see how they fall back into place. So you can save your knot, don't give up on it. Just slide those back into place, moisten it down a little bit more. See how that came together? That right there is a perfect Alberto knot. Crazy Alberto. And now you got your two tag ends here. I'm gonna snip this. Typically, I pull this line in my mouth just so it's tight. You cannot nick this knot. You wanna get it as close as possible. So we're gonna take this, get really close, snip that off. You can see how clean that is. And that's 30 pound braid to 15 pound fluorocarbon. That is a very tiny knot. Now we're gonna to go to the tag end of our fluorocarbon. And what I like to do is I like to open it up between your main fluorocarbon and the tag end. Get them separated and apart from each other so you're not nicking it when you're bringing your scissors down to it. Get right up to it here and cut that off. And there you have it, guys. I can tie this knot in a, a minute is a safe bet. I could probably do it in under a minute. Be sure to try this knot out. I know it won't let you down. I really love that crazy Alberto knot. And just like Hunter said, it's so easy. It's so simple to tie and it's a great knot. It's, it's nearly 100%. But with that being said, there's probably a little bit better of a braided line to fluorocarbon knot. And this is called the FG knot. It's actually pretty difficult to tie. I actually got Chad Smith to show you guys how to tie this knot. Now, if you're not familiar with who Chad Smith is, he's a guy who basically dominated as a co-angler on the Bassmaster Open Series for a number of years. I think he had something like uh, 10 or 11 top 10 finishes out of like 12 or 13 tournaments like absolutely ridiculous and now he's a Bassmaster Opens boater trying to become a pro. But Chad has a really unique way of tying the FG knot where he's not using three feet and two hands and four other people to tie it. It's just his two hands. Oh my gosh, dude. Holy crap. <laughs> no way, dude. It's a 10. That's 100% a 10. Dude, I don't know how big that is, but that's <laughs> easily over 10. 11 pounds on the nuts, dude. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Yo! 
What's up, guys? Uh, I'm Chad Smith. I fish in the Bassmaster Opens and wanted to talk to you about a uh, knot I use all the time, the FG knot. And the reason I like this knot a lot is because it's a very, very thin, narrow knot. It comes through the guides really well. It actually allows me to reel into my spool multiple cranks in. And the benefits of that are gonna be like if I break off or something along those lines, I can keep using that same leader. I'm not gonna have to retie an entire leader. I use it all the time up here in Minnesota, especially around the grass and stuff like that. Anytime, any spinning scenario set up, 100% of the time using this knot, you get the benefits of the no stretch and sensitivity in the braid, along with the stealthiness of the fluorocarbon. Gonna walk you through it. Got a big spool of fluorocarbon big spool of braid, and I'm gonna walk you through how I tie the FG knot. I do it a little differently than most people do. A lot of guys are wrapping the line around their rod, holding it with their teeth, doing it a bunch of different ways. I'm gonna show you how I do it uh, with my hands only. So I got my fluorocarbon, and all I'm gonna do is actually just let out enough line, put my foot on the spool, and I'm gonna bring it up over my knee, as you can see down here. So I got the, the fluorocarbon line going up over my knee. And got my braid line. I'm gonna utilize my pointer finger and my thumb. I'm gonna use those two to create tension. The key thing is keeping tension with every single wrap in this knot. I'm just gonna kinda grab, leave a little bit of a tag end out there, wrapping it around my two fingers like that. I'm able to kinda control that tension. And I take the line and I wrap it around uh, my pinky finger and like my ring finger. And that's solely just to keep that line from slipping. So I got that line wrapped around. I got the line in my two fingers there. I got my middle finger exposed, which is actually going to help me guide this fluorocarbon through it. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna go over the top of this braid with the fluorocarbon. So it goes right over the top. You can see how it's pressing down in there. And I'm gonna guide that line through. I'm gonna go one wrap on the left, under and up one wrap on the right under and up and i'm going to continue that process i do about 24 wraps yeah here we go so i'll kind of show you one so i'm guiding that fluorocarbon reaching under pulling it up over pulling it tight and straight same deal on the other side so that would count as two wraps of the 24 we're going to do so three four five six seven, eight, 14. And notice every time I'm pulling that fluorocarbon tight and straight after every single wrap. So if you can see it there, I'll kind of move my arm out of the way so I got a good contrast against the wall. But um, that's forming that knot now. But then all I'm gonna do is just pinch that little intersection part kind of got to unwrap, unwrap the braid from uh, your fingers. That can be the most annoying part. But so then I got the, the tag end braid over here. It ends. The main line braid over here. And the fluorocarbon tag end. So I'm going to hold those two together. And with that tag end braid, I'm going to do just two overhand knots over those two lines. Pull it down tight, cinch it. Again, one more time. So then I'm gonna leave that tag end of the braid out to the side, and I'm gonna keep the fluorocarbon tag end, and I'm gonna do two more overhand knots over the main line braid. So there's one. Now I got that and now this is kind of a little trick part so I, in the past I've knocked loose that fluorocarbon knot so what I do now is I do two more of that first knot we did tag end braid over uh, the fluorocarbon tag end and the braid main line so all that's going to do is it's actually going to pull the tag end of the fluorocarbon up and keep it in uniform with the knot. So, and keep some of that tag end tight so you don't have the ability to knock that fluorocarbon knot out of place. So then 
you can cut your fluorocarbon as close as you can get. Then all we're going to do with the mainline braid and the tag end braid, we're just going to do four more overhand knots. Again, just cinching them real tight. And four. So now you can cut braid as close as you can get. A little trick I'll do sometimes is I'll actually cut so I have like an eighth of an inch hanging off and, and actually heat it with the side of a lighter, burn it, and that just eliminates some of the fraying. I don't have a lighter for this instance. That is the FG knot. I got the fluorocarbon over here, braid line over here. It's a very narrow knot. Um, I'm using 65 pound braid and 20 pound fluorocarbon right now just so I can show you guys this a little bit better. It's the off season. Definitely check out the FG knot. Give it a try. Try this method. It's something that clicked for me a little bit better. I know it can be a tricky knot to learn, but once you get the confidence in it, you're not going to break this knot. The only time you're going to break anything is going to be one of the main lines. This knot's going to hold tight. Test it. Get the confidence in it. It's the off season. It's a tight line, guys. We'll see you next time. If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more of them like that in the future, then go down in the description, click that link to Sportsman's Outfitters, and go ahead and pick you up some fishing gear. You're going to save some money. It's going to help support this channel. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.